I recently called Joe Biden political magikarp in one of the weekend segments, something that Pokemon fans appreciated, or one of you still watching, basically flip-flops ineffectively between positions without ever actually committing to one and disappoints his trainers, who are obviously behind the scenes puppeteering him. Well, we've got our own empty suit running for the position of office in, in this country, and that would be one Rishi Sunak. So, how about we look over Schrodinger Sunak's politician uh, political positions during his time for running and prove essentially why he's an empty suit who cannot be trusted and not going to win anyway. So before we go into that, let's look at Rishi Sunak's economics. If you look at the uh, Lotus Eaters website, it's why the left doesn't understand economics. You can watch this video to understand modern monetary theory, the reason the Bank of England has been printing tons of money, um, I believe it's something like £1 billion in a month to, to start kickstarting Rishi Sunak's furlough scheme back in November 2021 and has gotten us into this mess where monetary supply outpaces actual goods supply. Thanks for inflation, Rishi. Of course, you're going to be controlling that. So tonight as a, a hustings in Cheltenham and uh, ahead of that, Rishi Sunak, by doing an interview on GB News, which we'll look at in a minute, but also this article in the Daily Mail, he's vowed to launch a major crackdown on grooming gangs and, and start recording the ethnicities of the perpetrators where they previously weren't. So writing in today's Daily Mail at the time, Sunak warns that fears over racism must not deter the fight against grooming gangs after an inquiry revealed that the police failed to tackle widespread abuse by South Asian men in Telford for fear of looking politically incorrect. Under his plans, the National Crime Agency, NCA, will be ordered to set up investigations anywhere where significant grooming activity is known to have taken place. The NCA is already leading, leading a huge inquiry called Operation Stovewood into child sexual exploitation in Rotherham. Sunak would launch a national grooming gang's whistleblower network to make sure that cases are properly investigated, ending the scandal of public bodies ignoring evidence of abuse. He said it would also be a criminal offence for those who are arrested, uh, for those arrested for child exploitation, um, he said it would be a criminal offence for those arrested for child exploitation not to reveal their ethnicity or nationality or to lie about it. So if, if when you're arrested, you say that you're, you're an ethnicity or nationality other than what you are and you're arrested for child grooming, you'll get an extra charge placed on top of it. But not, I don't think he's necessarily said that police failing to report it will also be a dereliction of duty and a criminal charge for them. Um, also note how nobody has spoken specifically here about the religion of these people. Because, frankly, religion plays a large part. They're not raping Sikh girls as well as English girls because of the different ethnicity. They're raping them because of a different religion. And so there are, there are, I suppose you could say, intersecting layers of oppression going on here that aren't being addressed, again, for fears of political correctness, unfortunately. And, and didn't they also rape some Hindus, which was interesting because Rishi is a Hindu and didn't, he hasn't he talked about it much, but you well, think he might because there were some Hindu girls involved in Telford, as I hear. Mm. And it's just, it's interesting he's been quite weak on this. Truss last night on GB News, yes. on the forum, it was quite good. And she was very strong on it. Whether it will happen, of course, we don't know. But she was very strong on Telford. She said, Any, everyone's got to be investigated. Counselors, police, absolutely everyone's yep. got to be held accountable. And she was very strong on it. And now maybe GB, um, Rishi's jumping on the bandwagon. Well, I, I found it, well, obviously Rishi was interviewed before Truss last night. Um, he was, this was, uh, he did Nesta McVeigh shopping on Saturday okay. here. But the interesting thing is in Truss's framing as well, she accepted the framing of the question that was asked when it said Pakistani. But again, Islam was not mentioned. And it's because it's it's a politically poisonous topic in this country, particularly when the uh, the former Prime Minister, Theresa May, said that she had favourite Quran verses and that she reads the Quran by her bedside every night in an attempt to pander what? to Muslim... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was She's back like the store of a vicar, isn't she? 2017. Well? Just... Remember when she said Easter worshippers? No, that was Hillary Clinton. No, no, no. Um, was that her she, as well? May got involved as well. Oh, for God's sake. She, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can't name one, one religious denomination when they're actually being attacked by the other. But... There you go. Um, so during this interview, he said he's refused to rule out lockdown in all circumstances, whereas Truss has said she will never lock down the country again. By the way, I'm not a big Liz Truss fan. I think she's a blithering idiot, but out of the two. Um, he said a particular group of people is committing these crimes in reference to grooming gangs, but he didn't actually say what that group of people was, quite notably. Um, and then he's pledged to make all police forces record the ethnicities of perpetrators and create a brand new life sentence for those involved in grooming with very limited options for parole. Why, if you're a groomer, if you're a child groomer, do you have any option for parole, for parole at all? Like, why would you want an early release? Why would you want, as happened to one woman, um, she she meets her abuser in, in a nightclub because he was released without her being informed so. Or one saw him walking around As Asda. But, uh, just, if you're involved in, in raping children, why are you let out of prison? So yeah. then, then Neil Oliver tells it as it is, one of my favourite GB News hosts 
who I'd still like to go on your show, Neil, if you're listening. Um, it would be a step forward if we stopped talking about grooming gangs and called it what it is. Wholesale rape of children by mostly Pakistani men. It would also help if politicians admitted they have known about this and this has been going on under their watch for many years. And actually, Liz Truss, as you said, she was relatively strong in saying it would be prosecuted, but she failed to mention that that it would, she said local governments and police, but also there are some people currently sitting as MPs in Parliament that were implicated in overlooking these prosecutions. These are some of her colleagues. She didn't mention them. So it's just frustrating that this, this utter apathy by the British establishment to act on the exploitation of these girls permeates all levels of government. And Rishi Sunak, who's never mentioned it before, now jumps on the trend because he knows the voting base is far more based than he is. Irritating. So if we look to the, the disappointing grooming gang report, um, for those who aren't aware, quite a while ago, Sajid Javid, when he was Home Secretary, another snake in the grass, had said he'd commissioned a government review into the characteristics of street grooming gangs back in 2018. He said that they should leave no stone unturned, but the research was never published in full. And bear in mind, Sajid Javid said he was interested in this because most of the men he said were of Pakistani heritage. And as a man of Pakistani, her Pakistani heritage, I would like to clear the name of British Pakistanis. Totally fair. Um, when the government eventually begrudgingly released a version of this report, the Home Office tried to make its own assessment of ethnicity from the Police National Crime Computer and concluded that the existing data would not answer the question of the relationship between ethnicity and child sexual exploitation. And they said it was not in the public interest. There's also no mention of religion in the report. The only mention of Muslim is in the title of one of the references. There is no mention of Islam. The government did not even say that it has data on the religious affiliation of any of the perpetrators. It appears that this was not even considered. This is in spite of a recent response at the time then to a written question from Lord Pearson explicitly asking whether religious characteristics would be taken into account into the report. And the parliamentary petition also, as John's pointed out, reached over 100k. So it was debated on the Commons floor. So people really care about this issue and nothing's come of it. And people really cared about this issue for multiple years on, on all sorts of sides of the aisle, including some former Labour politicians, etc., um, who have been, who've been lambasted as racist for absolutely no reason. And Rishi Sunak is riding in on the coattails of this and suddenly saying, oh, I really care about this now when I've done literally nothing to help it before. Didn't, didn't that former Labour politician get sacked for yeah. bringing it up? Yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah. Whereas Naz Shah, who said... Um, uh, girls, uh, victimised girls should shut their mouths for the sake of diversity on Twitter, was appointed um, Minister for Cultural Cohesion or something like that. Yeah, she liked a, a joke tweet. She retweeted the Alex Jones tweet. Uh, uh, not Alex Jones, <laughs> Owen Jones. There we go. Definitely not Alex Jones. Um, so just a reminder, if you're thinking that Sunak's going to be anti-woke, he's participated in the diversity, equity, inclusion training, both at his time at Goldman Sachs, probably. I can't say that for certain, but Goldman Sachs have adopted this policy now when it's politically expedient and during his time at the Treasury. So Goldman Sachs here on there, if we go back to the previous one, John, there's a recent quote. At the crux of our efforts is a focus on cultivating and sustaining a diverse work environment at the workforce, which is crucial to meeting the unique needs of our diverse client base. We are committed to making progress toward racial equity, advancing gender equality, and increasing representation at every level of our firm. In 2020, through our board diversity initiative, we announced we would not uh, we would only take the company public in the US or Western Europe if it had at least one diverse board member. Just just the diverse, the, the national umma of diversity. We offer a number of programs designed to help our people contribute to an inclusive environment, including learning opportunities such as Blind Spot, Hidden Biases of Good People, a program that helps our vice president and above explore unconscious thinking and its impact on decision making, and subtle and significant, which explores how everyday actions can send micro messages and reinforce or erode meritocracy in the workplace. So in that utter word salad, what that basically means is we're going we're gonna, to uh, put loads of money into rooting out microaggressions with some weird witch hunt, which is just insane. So um, if we go over to the Treasury Department, which is frustrating. Equality and diversity in, the uh, diversity in the Treasury. When working on policy, our officials look at the impact of a policy option might have on those from protected groups, including positive opportunities for promoting greater fairness for them. They also consider if there are options for avoiding or otherwise mitigating against any negative impact on that group. Again, what that basically means is we're not going to do things on principle. We're going to try and micromanage from the top down equality, which, which okay, why, why are you trying to engineer society for... for reason uh, for equality across groups which might have disparate interests. It's just an utter pipe dream. And this is a Blairite paradigm that Conservatives have again adopted. So if we go on to the, the Treasury... Um, so that's here. the most Blairite politician around, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, I'd, I'd like to describe him as um, Justin Trudeau without the offensive boot polish. <laughs> yeah, you also, if you're an ultra-rich Asian guy, I mean, you, you probably won't have come across many culture war issues, right? Because you, if you're sort of a straight white man, you're already in trouble. 
and and if you're a normal person who's going to be affected by this stuff, but if you're sort of ultra rich like Rishi, I just think I don't think he really gets the culture no. war, and I think now he's you know as we've said he's pandering to the the members suddenly. Yeah, well, he's but, alienated from everyday concerns, which is something that people have raised. For example, you know he he didn't realise how to pay for a can of coke at the at the petrol station, um, and he said in years ago in a rather blundering video, which I'm not going to hold against him because he says some dumb things as a student, but I don't have any working class friends. Um, he's a multi multi millionaire. And then there's also the fact of, okay, un unless, unfortunately, and I'm, I'm not playing identity politics here, but um, straight white men are excluded from being hired in plenty of workplaces. And so unless you have a stake in saying, hey, this is unfair, this isn't meritocratic, and I'm being barred for how I was born, which I hate, um, unless you have that stake in that, you're not going to get involved. So he's he's now realizing, oh God, actually, my constituents really care about this. Yeah. So if I just blag enough to get into office, I can make false promises and then just sit in number 10 fat and happy for a while. Yeah, well, I was attacking comprehensive schools because like, I went to one, but Liz Truss, at least, she went to a comprehensive school, is a relatively normal person. So th this is an advantage for it. When well, speaking I wouldn't call to... Liz Truss normal. She's I said bit... relatively. Yeah, yeah she's, she's a bit odd. I put that in there. She's a bit odd, but she's, she has, knows more about normal life than, yeah. than Rishi. And also, this culture war thing has only just, they've only just started taking it up in this leadership race because normally it's called divisive culture war issues. They try and dismiss it. If you notice that yeah. politics are divisive, as if we're bringing it up. It's like, no, no, yeah. this is massive. We've got critical race theory. We've yeah. got children being mutilated at Tavistock. It's like, you might want to deal with this. Yeah, I, I, I will I will criticise Francis Foster, who was on the podcast the other day, who said, oh, we, we have to come together. We have to de-escalate tensions. I'm sorry, I cannot come together with a party or a group of people who want to lop the breasts off a 16-year-old girl. There is no reconciliation or coming together over that issue. Well, Francis is a nice guy, but um, it, it, I'm afraid he's wrong. It's, it's total war. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> They've and, just raided Trump's uh, Mar-a-Lago home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's civil war in America. Yeah, there are, some, there are some people that can be convinced into leaving people alone, and there are some that need to be utterly, utterly crushed. So if, John, we can go to page 53 of this report just because there's a nice infographic if you just keep scrolling down because it's not exactly lined up, it's page 53 at the bottom of it. Um, yeah, just to, so, yeah, yeah, that's all right. That's 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 me. We're nearly there. There's a little pie graph. There we go. So the Treasury likes to publish its its statistics on just how diverse they are. I'm just going to read this out just because it's, well, I thought you'd be able to make jokes on it, Nick, I'm going to be honest. 50.1% of Treasury officials are women. 545 at the executive management board and group directors level. So I suppose that explains the absolute state of public finances and those who think that joke has no legs to it, look at the graphs that as soon as women receive the vote, there's just a massive uptick in state spending. Yeah, I thought God I was a misogynist until I came on this podcast. Yeah, Harry, Harry, Harry just said the most amazing misogynist thing last time. You, you've tried to outdo him. <laughs> This week, I, I disavow heavily. <laughs> it's clearly a joke. Stop whining. Um, also, 50% of civil service servants are also women. And I would assume part of that is because women overwhelmingly go into HR departments. And this is where a lot of this festering nonsense is coming from. So it's not women's fault. It's not all women's fault. But it's the fault of HR departments, which are very staffed by the diversity initiatives. And to self-select with diversity initiatives, women and ethnic minorities, air quote, you're already self-selecting people who are on board with the woke ideology. Like, most women are going to be very insulted who aren't woke to get a position based on their genitalia. But those who are happy to take that are going to be woke. So by adopting these standards, singing from the left's hymn sheet, we're automatically accelerating their institutional capture. That's it's a great suicide. point. It, it kind of reminds me of how we, we at GB News and places like that, I shouldn't criticise them really since they're my employer, but they yeah. still do things like diversity, stuff like that. There's an idea yeah. that we have to do... Scene on screen. Yeah. It can't just be merit, which is... No. We should want merit. Yeah. But there's an idea that like, let's have diverse people saying anti-woke content. It's like, but at the structural level, you're already yeah. buying into the, the, yeah. their and ideas. And sometimes you get incredible commentators like Dominique or Calvin, who was sat in that very chair the other day, who are the best bastions of articulating exactly why the likes of Black Lives Matter are terrible. But sometimes you you hire people who might look fantastic in front of the camera, look very polished and, and all that, but they might not be the best to articulate the positions and they might not have read as much as somebody else. I thought it was bold of Calvin to say on GB News, no, no, we shouldn't hire on, on we should only yeah. hire on merit, never Good on, on identity. Yeah. Completely but right. But not everyone believes that. Um, despite all of these statistics and how the, the institutional leftists um, have captured us, they're still buying into it, of course. Um, I'd just like to remind you on the next article, from all people Vox, uh, the implicit association tests and unconscious buying tests are bunk science. They don't even make any sense. And um, the people who created the tests, other than Mazarin Banerjee, who is a, a I suppose you could charitably define her as a communist, um, have walked it back and said it doesn't make, doesn't do a damn thing. 
Um, according to the growing body of research that researchers who created the test and maintain it at the Project Implicit website, the IAT is not good for predicting individual biases just based on one test, because it's not replicable. You can take the test, it basically tests reaction time, and you can take it repeatedly until you get so good at it that even if you come up with an instance of an implicit bias on the first one, by the third one, you're clean as a whistle, even if you are an actual racist. Um, it can predict things in the ag aggregate, but it cannot predict behaviour at the level of an individual who took the test once, Calvin Lai, a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard University. University, and the director of research at Project Implicit told me. For individuals, this means they would have to take the test many times, maybe dozens of times, and average out the results to get a clear indication of their bias, and potentially how that bias guides behaviour. And you know for a fact that this is not being taken multiple times, um, and the cost of taking it even once is astronomical, which we'll get onto a bit. No researcher, not even the test creators, defend one-off use. Tony Greenwald, a University of Washington researcher who co-created the test with Mazarin Banerjee at Harvard, conceded this point. He told the writer that IAT is only good for predicting individual behaviour in the aggregate, and the correlations are small. So basically, you can't test the unconscious evil in someone's head, it's a witch hunt, shut up and go away. Unfortunately, most Tory MPs took part in DEI training during the Black Lives Matter riots anyway. And this included Rishi Sunak, because I don't think he dissented from this. Only 40 Conservative MPs are expected to say no at the time to unconscious bias training intended to tackle racism in the Commons. Terrible framing here by the Times. Um, accusing parliamentary authorities of pandering to the woke agenda. Tories in the European Research Group and Common Sense Group of right-leaning MPs said their colleagues would not take part. I would really rather gouge my eyes out with a blunt stick than sit for that Marxist snake oil crap, said one. Worth voting for. Tom Hunt, the MP for Ipswich, who's actually a half-decent MP, whoever is pushing this forward now is trying to pander to the woke agenda. I won't be. I think the vast majority of my constituents would not want me to waste two hours on a pointless unconscious bias session that will have no effectiveness whatsoever. Alexander Stafford, the new Conservative MP for Brother Valley, said it would be far better to spend time helping constituents than to be lectured by someone who's being paid a lot of money to tell you that you're an awful human being. Now again, I don't want to sound like Gary Oldman from Leon the Professional, but only 40. Why not all of them? <laughs> So the really frustrating thing is Ben Bradley wrote uh, an op-ed at the time in the mail and he actually gave us the figure for exactly how much this would cost. How much would you guess they're paying these people to come in for a, for a couple of hours of conversation about why you're an evil implicit racist and you don't know about it? Per hour? A couple of, a few grand. 1.4 million. Oh, I thought it was a, hang on, I thought you meant per person when they come in. No, no. You mean in total? Yeah, in total. 1.4 million taxpayer cash. Nice work if you can get it, eh? I might just start going around calling people racist for the grift, I suppose. But no, right-wingers are grifters, of course. Um, so after all that, we've we've seen that Sunak's record is decidedly not anti woke. He's not against the the lefty cancel culture who are trying to cancel our history and our women, as he said in every prescripted <laughs> husting statement. Um, Very weak on the woman question as well, wasn't he? Yes. What is a woman? And he said, uh, I think the prime minister gave a good yeah. answer the other day. Yeah, to Julia. Yeah, but Boris has said on uh, had said on multiple occasions that oh, it's it's biology, adult, adult human, female. But also there are there are some men that identify as women and trans people need to be really, really treated with respect. But let's, but sadly, that was the most based answer. It was yeah. compared to Rishi's. Well, that feeble was a frustration answer. with Liz Truss the other day. I mean, when at this hustings, funnily enough, she was sitting there talking to Tom Newton Dunn, and some imbecile in the crowd said that, "Oh, you think a woman is a woman? Uh, but is there any any place where you would call a man a woman?" And she said, "Well, there are there are trans people that need to be treated with respect, which is fine." And then she said, "But you can live as the opposite gender." Great, you've now you've now accepted the left's premises of dis distinguishing gender from sex and saying that gender is is delocalized from biological sex, and that was their wedge issue that got them to abolish sex in the first place. You're you're still mentally trapped in that prison. No, gender are a set of normative, ge uh, sex specific ethical standards you should try and live up to. If you're a man, try to be masculine. If you're a woman, try to be feminine. It's not oppressive. It's helpful. Frustrating. Anyway, on on Sunak's tax issue, another reason he's unpopular. There were hustings in Darlington. Liz Truss said he was doing Gordon Brown fixed pie economics. Um, I also want to note that Tom Newton Dunn complained that she'd slagged off the media a bit and got caught on a hot mic saying, oh, that was cheap. And she said, well, you know, I'm sorry about that, but it is it is his fault. So well done for doubling down on that. Um, Sunak, on, on saying that Truss is making unfunded tax promises because she wants to borrow a bit to try and help us out in the interim, has only promised to cut VAT on energy bills, which was his Brexiteer promise. And he said, oh, I'll cut... Um, uh, income tax, four pence in the pound, eventually, you know, after we win the next election that I've got to hold you guys to ransom to. But then he's raised national insurance at the time 
of a, a pending recession, making it the highest tax burden on the UK in 70 years. And then he's also pledging to raise the corporation tax to, I believe, 23%. So he was in charge with the US's Janet Yellen of getting this global corporation tax rate of 15%, which is basically a strong, strong arming mafia racket of every business around the world to say, well, you can't go elsewhere, can you? But now he's trying to look to raise corporation tax to a higher level than Jeremy Corbyn promised at the 2019 election. So yeah, he's, he's just Blairite. He's an absolute Blairite. Um, our Scottish neighbours have, have shown exactly why high taxes don't work. Um, they're actually bringing in £200 million less in the next piece, John, um, because they've put taxes up so high. Um, and the Institute for Fiscal Studies have, have said that this has actually caused a forecast of growth far weaker, just because even you're trying to offset inflation, you can't tax your way out of debt. It's a stupid plan. So if we can just play this next little clip um, this was a Sunak defender, and this just shows you exactly how much economic knowledge the Sunak camp have. What is his plan to beat inflation? Um, he believes that uh, we we need to get inflation down first. Um, yeah, but how? Does he involve working with the Bank of England? Um, well, certainly not by launching into very big unfunded tax cuts. I think that would be that would be a danger. Um, he He's setting out his plans on how to beat inflation in due course. Yeah, but we don't know what they are, do we? So if he wants to be Prime Minister, shouldn't we be told what he plans to do to get people's cost of living down? Um, and he certainly will set them out. When? I can't, I, I can't give you a date for that, but he is absolutely determined that we will address inflation. That's part of his his core plan for the economy. Yeah, OK. But I, I, I understand that, and I'm quite happy that he wants to do it. But you're halfway through um, a rather lengthy um, leadership de uh, debating season, and he hasn't yet revealed how he would do it. Is, is he reluctant to reveal it? Does he not know what he will do? What, what's the story? He is determined to get inflation down. He knows that that is the biggest economic challenge we face. And that's what he will do as Chancellor. Um, and he has put, he's made this his, his priority ahead of tax cuts. Of course, you know, as Conservatives, we all want to see taxes come down. But the reality is that um, you need to find a way to do that, which doesn't lead to excessive borrowing or fuel inflation. Okay. Well, let me ask you, Theresa, what do you think he should do if you were advising him on how to get inflation down? What would you suggest? Well, certainly I think we we need to um, ensure that the Bank of England has all the space it needs to, to deliver on the mandate that it, it has set. Um, that is a crucial way to beat inflation. Um, I know Liz Truss wants to see a review of the Bank of England's mandate, but actually I believe that uh, the Bank of England has a pretty good record in terms of keeping inflation at or near to target since it was granted independence. Really? really? So I think working in collaboration with the Bank of England and giving them the space they need to take measures to address inflation is, of course, crucial. Yeah. Well, when uh, the Bank of England said that they couldn't control inflation about two months ago, when it was down below sort of seven percent, what did you make of that? Because that sounded to me like they didn't know what they were doing. So I'm sorry for making you sit for a Mike Graham clip, um, but if you noticed, I mean, if you make him sound intelligent, it's quite staggering. I didn't know you're so anti Graham. I just, yeah, I, I just felt like that's how I would feel if I was stuck in an economic argument with my brother who has an economics degree, yeah. and I'm like, um, I'd ask the Bank of England. It is. It was, <laughs> Well, she's ridiculous. a predictive chatbot, isn't she? She's about as eloquent as Kamala Harris. Yeah, and can I just say, I read, uh, there was a poll the other day. I can't remember if it was Tory members or the general populace, but 62% of people felt that inflation was the main issue at the moment. Mm. So it's like, you might want to know what the policy is on it. Yeah, exactly how to tackle it. Yeah, I agree. Um, so if we'd like to load the Bank of England's mandate, this is the last case against Rishi Sunak, I suppose. Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming. So they've said, Tom Mutton... The director at Bank of England said during a conference on Monday that programming could become a key feature of any future central bank digital currency in which the money would be programmed to be released only when something happened. He said, you could introduce, you could introduce programmability 
What happens if one of the participants in a transaction puts a restriction on the future use of money? There could be some socially beneficial outcomes from that, preventing activity which is seen as socially harmful in some way. But at the same time, it could be a restriction on some people's freedoms. He warned that the government would be required to intervene and make the final decision. So Rishi Sunak's government would be seeking to intervene on what would basically become a financial social credit system. Yeah, if you speak to people at the Bank of England, they, they're like, oh, Bitcoin's just for drug dealers. That's very much that. They don't want anyone doing anything yeah. with money that... It's not that they can't them. control, yeah. But they like the idea of a blockchain because everything would then become nothing against the state, nothing outside the state, um, nothing against taxation, nothing outside taxation, etc. So if we just like to look at who is spearheading digital currencies, oh, it's Rishi Sunak. Great. So the crypto communist who's running for office, um, who isn't leading, funnily enough, with any of this stuff on his campaign trail, who is involved with uh, the uh, the the... Oh my God, Goldman Sachs, who were involved in the cons consultancy period of the WEF's blueprint for a digital identity, at the same time as the UK cabinet office, which he wasn't a member of, but the UK government were involved in this. That guy, the guy who is spearheading the the apparatus of our digital immiseration, is running for PM mm. on a fake anti-woke ticket. Although can I Fantastic. just say, I wouldn't worry too much because he's not going to win. And the other day he said, um, I'd rather lose than win on a false promise. So he's now at the stage of like, that's actually morally better, guys. That, that's the real quiz. He's gone yeah. full Brent. He's like, you know, it's better to actually lose. That's the yeah. stage of his campaign. The He's Corbyn done. position of, I may have lost the election, but I won the argument. And you know what? <laughs> Unfortunately, I fear he might get a cabinet position. And unless Truss's advisors are stalwart against this, they'll just adopt these stupid policies anyway. Thanks for watching this segment from the podcast Lotus Eaters. If you enjoyed that and want more, you can subscribe on our website and become a premium member where you can access our exclusive content, including this recent premium video, The Politics and Philosophy of Studio Ghibli, a discussion between Connor and John on that subject. If you're interested in following Connor on social media, you can follow him on Getter at con underscore Tomlinson. Thank you and goodbye.